Good evening and welcome to Legacy of the Lakes Museum in Alexandria, Minnesota. I'm Dave Bortner, a board member here at the museum. And tonight we're going to talk about a period in time of incredible social and cultural change. A time when people's lifestyles were going to change and they didn't really know it yet. What are we talking about? The past year? No. We're talking about the turn of the 20th century in a very specific place, Detroit, Michigan, and the surrounding area. Uh, Detroit sits on the Detroit River and Lake St. Clair. At the northeast end of Lake St. Clair is the St. Clair River, which goes from Lake St. Clair to Port Huron, Michigan, where Lake Huron begins. It's a huge shipping area. Boating is culturally in the blood there, and it's where all of the major American builders, well, almost all of the major American boat builders began. Specifically tonight, we're gonna to talk about Chris Craft, but other boat builders, including Belle Isle, uh, Hacker Craft, and Gar Wood, were also in the same geographic area as Chris Craft, but that's a whole nother talk. Chris Craft was founded by Christopher Columbus Smith, and Chris Smith began his career in the St. Clair Flats, as they're known, as what was called a market hunter. He shot birds, ducks and geese and such, and sold them to all the hotels in Detroit to serve in the restaurants. From there, uh, the, the Detroit folks were enjoying the birds so much, somebody finally said, where do all these birds come from? And they said, well, there's this guy named Chris Smith who's our market hunter. And from there, Chris Smith developed a career as a hunting guide. Corollary to being a hunting guide for some of the biggest names in Detroit, he built his own duck boats eventually and then started building and selling duck boats. Uh, also built duck decoys, so if you ever see a duck decoy stamped C.C. Smith in the bottom of it, that's a Chris Smith duck decoy, and those are quite sought after by collectors today. Uh, as the duck boat building business prospered, uh, at the same time, the internal combustion engine was being developed and refined specifically in the Detroit area, and both the marine and automotive industries kind of developed at the same time until automobiles took off and kind of left the boat development behind. But the original internal combustion engines were really developed more for boats than for cars. So there were engines around and Chris Smith was a boat builder. So of course, what followed was putting an engine in a boat. And that eventually evolved into uh, building race boats because the fastest boat was the most desirable boat. Um, the first iteration of the Smith powerboat building business was known as the Smith Ryan Boat Company. Chris Smith and Baldy Ryan, who was a high flying financier who eventually went bankrupt and left Chris Smith without a financial backer. Uh, in the 1918-19 in the time frame. Uh, Chris's next partner in the boat building business was a gentleman by the name of Gar Wood. And that's another talk too. But Gar Wood was a very early industrialist in the Detroit area. He invented the hydraulic dump mechanism for dump trucks and became very wealthy at a very young age. But his passion was boat racing. He wanted to race boats. And Chris Smith built race boats for Gar Wood, but Chris Smith had bigger plans in mind. Uh, one of his hunting guide clients was a gentleman by the name of Henry Ford, who is supposed to, to have said, legend has it, Chris, the only way you're ever gonna make any money building boats is if you set up a production line and build them on a production line. 
And that's what Chris Smith wanted to do. So while he was building boats for Garwood, mostly race boats, uh, he made plans to begin building production mahogany runabouts. Garwood didn't much like that idea and didn't want to be a partner in that. So they separated and Garwood decided to get in the boat building business as well. And of course, that's the Garwood name that we know today. Um, some of the earliest Garwood boat hulls, the wood parts, were built by Chris Smith and his crew. In 1922, the very first boat that was known as a Chris Craft was christened, as it were. And the first run of Chris Craft boats are known today as the Roman numeral boats because their serial numbers were stamped Roman numerals in the boat. And here we have a, an example of a 1922, 26-foot Chris Craft, um, a Roman numeral boat. Let's see, do I remember what the serial number is? Oh, yes, it's six in Roman numeral. And this boat is on loan from a very dear friend of ours who's an avid collector who owns number four, number six, and number 63. All three 26-foot Chris Crafts all with different engines. This particular boat has a Curtis OX-5 airplane engine in it, a V8 engine, a uh, very early V8 developed for aircraft use uh, of 90 horsepower. The way that boats went fast in the 1920s was by using airplane engines in them, long story short. Uh, most of which were available very inexpensively as war surplus through the government from World War I. Uh, the Curtis OX-5 was developed for trainer planes in for World War I aviators. So the, the Roaring Twenties progressed, uh, Chris Craft progressed, Chris Craft got bigger, built more boats, uh, the boats got a little more sophisticated. Over here we have a 1929, 24-foot sedan boat. Uh, you can see the lines have evolved a little bit. They're a little bit more streamlined. Um, the hardtop boats are much rarer than one would think by looking at our fabulous Chris Craft display here at Legacy of the Lakes. Uh, there weren't very many hardtop boats built, and the way they were built is, again, Detroit area automotive. The automot automobile top builders uh, built the tops in their factories, sent them to Chris Craft, and they were hoisted up and set down on the boat and fastened to the boat. We've had the opportunity to restore a number of these hardtops, and we've found that no two of the hardtop boats are exactly the same. Everyone's a little bit different. So even though boats were being built on a production line as such, I refer to it as more serial custom production than production line because the boat builders were very anxious to provide any custom touches that a customer might want. Uh, hardtop boats were usually used uh, more like we would think of a station wagon automobile being used in that people who had homes on islands uh, or who had homes that were easier to get to by water than by road actually used the boats as their station wagon to haul luggage, to haul groceries, to haul whatever needed to be hauled to the, to the house. Um, so this is a 24-foot version. It has windows that slide open on the sides, and the front window panel opens up to provide flow-through ventilation. The, the advantage of having a hardtop boat was early spring, late fall, and inclement weather use that would be relatively protected, like being in an automobile. Over here we have a 1929, 
28-foot Chris Craft sedan. Uh, this boat is graciously on loan to us from the Antique Boat Museum in Clayton, New York. Uh, this boat is powered by its original Chris Craft A70 V8 engine, which is a flathead V8 of about 800 cubic inches. Uh, the way that you made boats go fast in the late 20s and early 1930s were with huge displacement engines with uh, relatively little torque, little horsepower, but lots and lots of torque to spin the, pro the propeller uh, at relatively low RPMs. So this A70 engine is a 2400 RPM maximum engine. Uh, this is a little bit more deluxe in the side windows on this hard top actually roll down like windows in a car and the forward window pane rolls open uh, with a crank from the inside. So the 20s, 30s, uh, the 30s were a very difficult time for all the boat builders because of the depression um, and relatively many fewer boats were built in the 1930s than the 1920s and everyone was kind of in the survival mode and the Chris Craft factory actually went back to making decoys, duck decoys for a period of time when they had idle workers who weren't working on boats. Um, then of course the war effort began in the late 30s. Uh, all of the boat builders were involved in uh, war production from 1942 until 1945. Uh, there are very, very, very few 1942 Chris Craft boats uh, that were built before the war production took full precedence. Um, and there were no 1945 models. The first model after the war was 1946. Uh, these two boats are the same. They are Chris Craft 22-foot custom sedans uh, built on the 22-foot sportsman hull, which is the single model of which Chris Craft built the most boats in their boat building career. Um, both of these boats have very rare windshields that open on the 22-foot model. Uh, most of them the front windshields did not open and they were a little bit warm in the summer. Uh, this gives us an opportunity to look at a before and after uh, restoration project. This is typical of the way boats were found in the 1960s and 70s. They had been allowed to, to deteriorate to a point where they needed major restoration. Um, another interesting piece of the, the Chris Craft history is that when Chris Craft got to the point where they were actually engineering boats, they engineered them to last for only seven years. So the fact that any of these boats in here exist today is a miracle in and of itself. Uh, this boat is 1951, so these, the Chris 22-foot sportsman and custom sedan models were built from 1946 until 1954. Um, Chris built about 4,000 of them in total. And this is a beautifully restored version that is owned here by a local collector uh, and used every summer except this summer while it's here on display in the museum. The boat hanging from the rafters is a Chris Craft 19-foot racing runabout, which was also a popular model concurrent with 
the sportsman models uh, from 1946 through 1954. Uh, interestingly, the very first Chris Crafts after World War II were built of cedar because the supplies of mahogany had been depleted through the war and it took a period of time for the, the shipments of mahogany to begin again and arrive where they needed to be. So some of the, the 40s, the 46, 47, 48 boats were cedar and cedar doesn't take stain and varnish as beautifully as mahogany so those boats are painted red and white. Uh, the racing runabout came in a red and white version and the sportsman came in a version with white sides uh, painted rather than varnished mahogany. One of the consequences of the war was the rapid development of materials, uh, aluminum and fiberglass specifically, uh, and right after World War II, uh, fiberglass boats started to be built um, in a, a very disorganized way. There were hundreds of little fiberglass boat builders all over the country because they could. And one of the results was that finally designers had, or dreamers or creators had an opportunity to work with a material that could be molded into any shape they wanted versus the constraints of dealing with wooden planks with grain and, and uh, limits on how much they could be stressed or, or uh, bent. Um, and one of the uh, Chris Craft models that was the beginning of the fiberglass era was the Chris Craft Cobra. That was a very special 1955 only model and it was the first production use of fiberglass by Chris Craft in the, the fin and the deck hatches are fiberglass. Uh, this boat has been restored to its original configuration and colors, uh, gold bottom, gold fin, and hatches. This is an 18-foot version. They were built in both 18 and 21-foot versions and the 21-footers had uh, very interesting high-powered V8 engines, including Chrysler Hemis and Cadillac Crusader V8s. And with the advent of fiberglass, of course, Chris Craft uh, experimented with and built boats. Uh, eventually, all boats were built of fiberglass, but this is the very first use of fiberglass uh, on a Chris Craft boat. Uh, the kind of quote unquote complete use of fiberglass. So this deck was molded separately uh, and being able to incorporate shapes that would be very difficult to build of wood. Fins, of course, were important in 1958 and 59, but the structure of the boat below the gunnels was standard Chris Craft planked fare. The bottom of the boat was a double planked regular Chris Craft bottom, and the fiberglass went only from the gunnel down to the water line. The bottom was a wood boat through and through. Um, these were built in 1958 and 1959 only, uh, and they had some interesting engine options as well. This boat is equipped with a 215-horse Ford Interceptor, uh, which is 312 cubic inches, the same engine block basis that was used in the Ford Thunderbird. And then in the 1960s, uh, Chris Craft, like all the wood boat builders, began to realize that fiberglass was going to take over and the, the wood boats needed to be styled so they didn't look so much like wood boats. So we'll take a look over here at the Chris Craft Super Sport model from the early to mid 60s.
So we see some white paint, vinyl decks, uh, fiberglass fins, fiber strakes on the side of the boat, uh, fiberglass engine box lid, um, and likewise these boats were um, equipped with V8 engines, mostly Chevrolet based, uh, 283 and then later 327 blocks uh, from the automotive uses. And then this is a very interesting chapter in the Chris Craft story. This is a Chris Craft kit boat. And when Chris Craft started using plywood in boat building as underlayment and inner bottom, uh, they found that they had a great big scrap pile of plywood and somebody was looking at that big pile of plywood one day and said, what could we do with that? And they came up with the idea of building kit boats that they would ship to the purchaser who would then assemble them uh, by themselves on their own. Uh, this is a kit boat that was very nicely uh, assembled. Um, and interestingly, still today, we get calls from people who have unbuilt kit boats in the rafters of their garages wanting to sell them. Um, early on, when they began this kit boat division, they were quite popular and they sold quite a few of them and they kept building kits and building kits anticipating the, the demand would just continue to grow and it really didn't. So all of a sudden they had, rather than a great big pile of scrap plywood, they had a great big pile of kit boats in inventory. And somebody looked at that great big pile of kit boats and said, what could we do with those? I know, let's build some. So they began building their own kit boats, which became the Chris Craft division known as Cavalier, uh, which were built primarily of plywood. It was a whole separate division of Chris Craft. So that concludes our walkthrough of the Chris Craft display here at Legacy of the Lakes Museum. Uh, before we go, though, we would like to encourage you to join us for the Legacy of the Lakes Boat Show at Arrowwood Resort on July 10th, where a number of these boats will be featured, as well as other boats from the local area and Minnesota, greater Minnesota. Uh, and we'd like to thank our main boat show sponsor, Diamond Buick GMC, for their participation with us. We really appreciate their support. So that's a little bit about Chris Craft. Thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, I'm Dave Bortner. Thanks very much.